What's up, Triple B gang? Welcome back to another video with your boy, Triple B, where we burn rubber and not our meat. We get outside and cook something, baby. Look, today we're doing a first part of a two-part video that I'm doing a collab with CJ over at Mama and Papa Joe's. Look, I'm gonna leave a link to his channel in the description below. So on the collaboration, we're doing gumbo. As you know, cooking a roux is very crucial. And in the video, I'm not going to show much of how to cook the roux. So this is gonna be the first part and it's gonna be nothing but making a roux. That way I can release it and then the actual gumbo cook the next day. So here we go. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's do this, baby. We're gonna go in with a quarter cup of oil. We're gonna go in with three quarters of a stick of butter. We're gonna let that do its thing and melt. Like so. Dump a little bit of this in there. You wanna test it, make sure it's not too hot. That's good. And don't worry if it clumps up on you. It's not a problem. Once it all mixes up real good with the liquids, it'll be real clumpy and gummy. And then it will start releasing and getting kind of loose. This is what you want. See how it kind of turned into like a, a paste almost? That's what you want. Now generally I turn the heat up a little bit. What I'll do is I'll go from medium to medium hot, from medium hot to back down to medium and I just keep adjusting as I'm stirring. Cause you don't want it to burn on you. This is the most important part of gumbo. You just gotta keep it stirring so it doesn't burn, but you do want it to start changing colors on you. See how it's starting to loosen up now? It's not so much a paste. Right now we're at that pie dough consistency and it smells like pie dough. Kind of sweet and nutty. Just keep stirring. See how we're getting darker and darker as time passes. And we're on medium. I'm gonna turn it up to about medium high real quick. Now, I would not say, if you are a beginner, I have a fail-proof way of making roux. It takes about three times as long, but it's a fail-proof way of making roux. And it'll be perfect. I'll, I'll link that video right here in the top corner and I'll also put it at the end of this video. I may put it in the description as well so everybody has access. And as you see, we're getting this chocolatey color. Just gotta make sure that nothing sits in one spot for too long if you're working at a high heat. And hey, you get a phone call, you gotta use the bathroom, the dogs are fighting, whatever it is, you can always turn the heat off for a minute. Keep stirring until it kind of cools down a little bit. Take it off the burner and go do what you got to do. You can come back to it. This is where all the love is because your arm's going to start hurting. You're going to feel it because you, you're going to continue to do this. See how nothing's sticking at the bottom? We're starting to get that caramel color. We need to go past this. We need to go a lot darker than this. We've been doing this for what? Maybe three minutes now? Maybe four minutes? Let's keep it going. See now we're, we're starting to get a lot darker. This is exactly what we want. Make sure you scrape them sides down. Yeah, we almost there, baby. Now I'm gonna tell you something, once we get to about, I don't know, like a Hershey's chocolate bar. 
probably be about the best reference or the closest reference. Uh, color, that's when we're gonna add these vegetables. I know it's smoking, let me turn it down a little bit. You know, normally I would have my vent fan on, but you don't wanna hear that vent fan. So, see how we're at this color now? We'll add them vegetables. Now, if you wanna take that roof further and darker, be my guest, go for it, everybody's different. Look at that. Oh yeah. Normally I would use a wooden spoon. I'm using the silicone now because that's all I got right now. I may have to switch between it and this here. You want to cook down these vegetables pretty good sweat them out real good don't worry about if it's clumpy and stuff because once it starts boiling in that chicken chicken stock or seafood stock whatever you decide to use it'll break up and everything will be get good this is just this is your thickening agent along with your okra but this is where all your flavors at man now the next thing we're going to add is going to be our garlic That mixed in real good. Now, if you're having any sticking going on, like I got a little bit, but it's all right. You can take you about half of an amber beer, just a light lager. And you're not gonna have any kind of beer flavor or anything like that. But you see how that made it kind of gummy? That's what you want. Oh yeah, that's what you want. The vegetables are getting cooked. Now I'm gonna turn this burner off and the residual heat of this cast iron is gonna to continue to cook this out. See, I let it sit for a little bit too long. That's easily fixed by taking a ladle, taking some of your, some of your chicken broth. Now I'm making a mess. Yeah, you see that gets it up. See, now we got like this real thick paste. This is exactly what we want, y'all. And it's that simple, guys. Look, don't be afraid to get in there, throw a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, a little bit of flour together, and start making you a roux so you can make a good gumbo. Look, it ain't nothing to it. At the end of the day, it's just all about getting in there, throwing a little bit of heart and a little bit of love into a skillet or a dish, and making it something that your family enjoys. And I normally take my roux a little bit darker than what you've seen there. That's how you make a roux. And look, man, at the end of the day, make it your way. Look, that's all we got today. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you comment on this video. This is the first part of a two-part series. Y'all be looking out for that next drop tomorrow. I don't forget, burn rubber, not your meat. Get out there and cook something, baby.